Hey guys, so I get a common question asked every so often about if there's anything players can do to reduce their ping or maximize their ping in game. And obviously you can go and you can download a ping reducer and pay for that service and usually those are the best options. But there are a few tricks that NCSoft has that you can do at home for free and sometimes they can help you reduce your ping. So. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to this page so you guys can go through and read through this and hopefully it will help you out. But I'm just going to have a few highlights. First, system requirements. Make sure you're not running your Aeon client on a potato because that's obviously going to affect your gameplay. It's going to give you FPS lag. It's going to make it feel like you're lagging even if you're not lagging so make sure you're not running on a potato uh some of these articles like these system requirements i this i would not say that this is valid anymore honestly we want windows 10 you want to have at least probably four gigs of ram even though aeon's not very ram heavy you just want to with all the background programs that we run on our pcs these days Especially with uh, if you use Google Chrome, Google Chrome is a processor killer. It just it takes up so many resources. It's horrible. Uh, make sh uh, if you're running Discord as well. Discord eats on um, processor and RAM as well. So that's another thing that you need to take into consideration when you're playing the game and trying to figure out why your game's not running smoothly or why it feels like you're lagging in the game. Rather it be actual ping. Or FPS lag there's just a lot of things you want to look at but I'll just leave this in the description below you can read through and try to figure things out for yourself uh, third priority programs that's ping reducers we're gonna skip over that network connection this is just a walkthrough of what all this stuff means what is IP what are packets what's firewall what's latency what's packet loss etc you don't really need any of that Port forwarding. Now, this is a debate that people are having since the NC West has switched to using AWS servers. Uh, we're not sure if these port forwarding work or not. I still recommend enabling them uh, just in case. In order to do this, you need to have access to your router or your modem slash router if you have a two in one like myself. Unfortunately, I can't make a video on how to do that because it varies from modem and router based on the brand and the model. You're just going to have to do a little Google research, look up your brand and model number, and you will find walkthroughs on how to access it to do it. Uh, I guarantee you, you will find it. but. It varies from every single brand, every single model. It uh, also varies if you have an ISP that is renting you a modem or a router. They might have locks on it, so you might have to contact your ISP to unlock it. So it really varies. Uh, default, of course, to get into a modem router is 192.168.11 to open most modems and routers if that doesn't work just change the last two digits to zero zero or one dot zero or zero dot one that usually works for most modems and routers so you just have to play around like i said it's best if you just google it and that will probably help you guys the most just to google your brand and look it up and once you're in there you're going to have to look at a guide on how to open these ports as well because it really varies from brand to brand. Mine's real nice and easy. I just click on port forwarding. I clicked on add ports and I typed them in and I'm good to go. And once again, we don't even know if this works anymore because NCSoft has not updated this in years. It's been two years since this has been updated. So we don't even know if these ports even work for the new services i have tried reaching out to loki and kibbles on the forums multiple times about this unfortunately they just never reply back i tried uh reaching out to support and support to send a auto reply ticket they basically took me to this page and they didn't even confirm or deny if it's outdated or not so not much i can do other than just share this information and we uh, uh cross our fingers and hope it still works 
The next thing, this one actually helps quite a bit. It's called flushing your DNS. It basically flushes out a bunch of cache memory that will help your connection stay a little more consistent. And to do this, it's real simple. All you need to do is you need to copy this, this IP space slash uh, flush DNS. So I'm gonna copy it. We need to open command prompt, which for on Windows, you just hit the Windows key and type in CMD, CMD. Right click, make sure you run this as administrator or else this will not work. And then now that we have this open, I can hold down control and hit V and it's gonna paste that that I copied earlier. I'll leave it in the comments below as well. And you hit enter and that's it. Just like that. It's quick, it's simple, it's easy. After you do this, I recommend you restart your computer just to be safe. And that's all you really have to do to flush your DNS. Another thing you want to do is you can go into msconfig and make sure you don't have too many background uh, programs going. So to do that, it's real easy. Again, we're going to hit our Windows key and just type in msconfig. So msconfig. And that you can just run as normal. You don't have to right click it or anything. Um, here we're going to go to services. We're going to make sure that this is selected to hide Microsoft. And then you're just going to scroll through. And mine is pretty cleaned out. Like I don't have anything to launch except for one program that I absolutely need to launch when my computer launches. But as you go through, you'll see that you will have like a bunch of check marks on a bunch of different programs. And if you feel like you don't need these programs to start automatically, because that's what they are doing if there's a check mark next to them, you can go ahead and you can uncheck the check mark. Like if you have Skype or uh, different cleaners or some type of monitoring system for your liquid cooling system, you might not need that stuff running 24 seven. You might not need that running while you're gaming or when you first start your PC up. So go ahead and uncheck those boxes that you don't need. Another good thing to do is scroll through here and see if there's any programs you see on here that you do not need. And if you don't need them, when you're done with this and done with unchecking all of these and going through this walkthrough, you can go ahead on go on your PC and uninstall those programs, free up some space. Uh, as I can see, as I'm going through here, there are a couple programs that I do not need, like Logitech Facecam Service. No clue what that is. I do not need it. So I can go ahead and I can uninstall it when I'm done making this video. But once you have all the check marks unchecked that you don't need, just click re Apply. Again, I recommend to restart your computer after you're done doing this, and you should be good to go. Then when you come back, you're going to want to open your task manager, which is control alt delete by default, or if you're still in this menu, you can just click here and it'll open it up. Look through these startup programs and the important thing we're looking through is right over here, the status, if it's enabled or disabled. So I like to sort mine by clicking on the status and see what's enabled and see what's disabled. And what you need to do is go through and see if there's anything that you don't need booting up with your PC. Again, here's Skype again. I have it disabled. I don't need Skype. I almost never use it. So I have it disabled. Uh, Cortana, I don't use Cortana, so I have it disabled. Uh, Razer Synapse, that one I actually should probably have enabled. So my uh, mouse remembers my settings, but it uses a lot of background uh, processing power so I just have it disabled so I'll just go through this make sure you only have things enabled to run when your PC starts up that you need that you absolutely need disable everything else and when you're done just close all of it it'll probably ask you to apply the changes and restart your PC when you're done uh, another thing we can do and this is the second to last step is if you're having a pot high ping, you've done all those steps, it has not resolved anything. You've already tried restarting your modem and your router, which means unplugging them for 10 seconds, plugging them back in, and rebooting your PC to see if that helps. If you've gone through and done 
all of that, the next thing you want to do is we want to test to see if your router is failing on you. And it could be. It could be your router or it could also be your LAN cable. Um, you want to make sure you're playing hardwired when you're playing PC games. You don't want to be using Wi-Fi. So I recommend that you go out and buy a LAN cable. And if you are hardwired and it's been the same LAN cable for your entire life, you're going to want to replace it. Uh, LAN cables have came such a long ways. Uh, they can process a lot higher speeds now than what they used to. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the newest Ethernet cord that there is. So I recommend at least once every year or two to go out and replace your Ethernet cord. Now those of you that are running like 100 foot Ethernet cords, you probably just cringed. But they have came down in price. You can get them pretty cheap. You can look them up on Amazon. I personally recommend going to a store in person and talking to a sales associate. Tell them what kind of upload and download speed you have, what type of modem router you have, and they can recommend the best uh, LAN cable for you. Because you don't want to use a LAN cable that is set up or it uses... It allows higher packets to travel through than what you're sending out because you, then you're just wasting money. So just make sure that you guys are swapping out your LAN cables every few years to make sure you don't have any kinks in them, uh, that they're not having major packet loss, etc. But if that's up to date, next thing you want to do is make sure that your router isn't going out on you. Now, this is a common issue, and what you're going to want to do is if you have a hardwire connection going to your router and then your router goes to a modem you want to bypass your router so unplug your cords from your router and then what you want to do is you want to take your cord from your PC and plug it into the WAN port It'll be marked WAN on your modem and then see if that works if that resolves your issue if your ping goes down if it's better your router has something wrong with it. It could just be old and needs to be replaced. It could have had some settings screwed up. Maybe it just needs to be rebooted again. Uh, I personally recommend instead of going out and buying a new one right away, try doing a hard reset on it. Uh, you can Google how to do that real easily on just about all of them. And then go back in, reset up your port forwarding. Uh, if there's some gamer options in there, some of them have some gamer options. Kind of play with them, toggling them on and off. See if that resolves your issue. But this is just a troubleshoot way to kind of help you figure out if your router's going out. And that can affect your ping quite a bit. Now, the last thing to do. And this is the Hail Mary thing. If you've done all those steps, if you've done everything on the left hand side here, gone through every tab and tried everything they suggest, and it's just not working. Maybe you even went and you downloaded a ping reducer program and it's not helping. You're gonna have to reach out to NC support. And I know, I know none of us wanna do that because the, it's they're horrible, they take forever to get back to you. And nine times out of ten, they just give you an auto reply message that is not very helpful. But when it comes to tech support, they actually are somewhat decent. They're still going to take forever to reply, probably, but they have some decent auto reply messages that can be helpful. But before you write a ticket, what you want to do is come to this last tab, follow the instructions to run this DX diagnosis and attach that to your support ticket that you send to them. And hopefully a GM will actually look through it and sometimes something jumps out at them that they see and they're like, oh, well this is an easy fix. And they copy and paste the fix and send it to you and you just follow the instructions and hopefully it works. But that's basically all I have for you guys right now. I know that was a lot of information, there's a lot more information that I could share too, but I don't want this video to be too long. So I hope to help, if it did, hit that thumbs up. If you have other suggestions to help other players, make sure you leave a comment below with clear instructions or with clear links to uh, different tutorials. Just try to help each other out the best you can. Share this video to friends that are struggling. And make sure you're following this page if you're not already. And as always, I hope to see you guys in game.